It's it. Connor oh, tapped. Connor tapped. Damn. And still, your UFC champion, Khabib Nurmagomedov. And he's going off at someone in the crowd. I don't know who he's going off at. Oh, wow. He's going after someone. Holy crap. Oh, he's attacking Dylan Dennis. Wow. There's a brawl. It, oh, my God. There's a brawl outside the octagon right now, ladies and gentlemen. Khabib attacked Dylan Dennis, which is a training partner of, uh, of Conor McGregor. Oh, oh, oh someone, someone attacked, attacked Conor, Conor McGregor. McGregor. One of Khabib's teammates attacked Conor McGregor. There is a complete brawl right now, ladies and gentlemen, There's in the octagon. And out of the octagon. Holy crap. Wow. Both teams are going at it. Holy shit. Wow. Police have completely ascended on the place. Wow. 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 What a what a black mark on the event right now. Black eye. Yeah. Black eye, thank you. That is um that is hands down the most unexpected thing I have seen thus far this week. The camera is still panned on the very outside camera. They're not showing anything up close right now. Now they do finally. Conor McGregor got attacked in there, man. Wow. That is crazy. And the guy caught him in the back, too. This guy literally... He uh, sucker punched him, yeah. He, he jumped over the fence and sucker punched him. Wow. I definitely need someone to call in. 323-870-4051. Press 1 to get in the queue. This has turned into something historic at first and then on another level infamously historic um i think they're trying to make connor just leave i don't know what's happening here ladies and gentlemen we're gonna be here and try to figure out what happens wow i don't know what they do here I mean, how do you have the usual moment where you wrap the belt around them? And they just like you brought Khabib back in, and he looks heated. Like, you literally had a guy just do a assault and battery right now. Like, a bee might head to jail after this. And he's even got DC and Herb Dean talking to him. Daniel Cormier trying to, to, to calm down Khabib, but and so is Luke Rockhold. Every, his old team is trying to calm him down right now. This is this is really unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen. I want I want to talk about the fucking fight. And this shit happens. Yeah, um That's a hell of a way to take everyone aback, like seriously. Yeah. This is this is just downright just disgusting, to be quite honest. Because it, it not only was Khabib jumping, it was everything that happened after that as well. It escalated so fucking fast. And for his teammates, and I know who, who it was, I forget the names, but I know who it was, that jumped the fence and sucker punched Conor McGregor. Come on, man. That's just as bad as when freaking uh, Darrell's uncle sucker yes. punched Uskategui. Yes. This is really bad, ladies and gentlemen. This is... There will be legal trouble after this. This is not an isolated incident here. Khabib literally might 
gr- grab his belt and walk off to jail after this. Because, again, he jumped the fucking fence and committed assault, assault and battery. battery. And then just- his entire team did, too. Uh, call, um, calling Gus, Fern, MM, seriously, Wawa, 323 press 1 again in the queue. I need someone else to come in here and sort of yeah, give, us give an outside opinion, opinion here because I don't yeah, definitely, I don't know if guys. maybe we're being too too hard on it. I, I don't know. It just seems like this entire event went from such an amazing fight, an amazing and just an amazing event. UFC 229 was one of the best events of all year. The whole year it was. And it had to end the way it did. Think about, think about Tony Ferguson versus Anthony Pettis. That was an amazing... How hard is it to go back and talk about that right now? It's just this moment has... Derek, come, Derek Lewis moment. This, come th- on. This entire incident has completely overshadowed Con- Connor, the event. It, Connor is leaving the event, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, think, I think it's due to security more than anything because he is just completely surrounded. They're, Khabib's trying to get his belt. This is just, uh, it's insane. Joe Rogan just made a really good point right here. Las Vegas, everyone in Las Vegas right now, be very fucking safe. Be very fucking safe. Be careful, man. Khabib's crew, it's not just that it's you have a bunch of Russian and Irish people that are drunk, and we know the stereotypes of those two people. It's not just that. Khabib runs with a particular crew, ladies and gentlemen. So please, if any, if anyone's listening... And they're in Las Vegas right now. Be safe. Be safe out there. Stay with your group if you came yep. with, with a group. Just be careful tonight because this... this like, like Joe Rogan said, it's going to spill out into the streets. It is. Be safe. Yeah, another good point from the athletic commissions. This that's another not even legal trouble. The athletic commissions, it's it's gonna be trouble. Fugati, wow, saying what happened? My feed went out. Fugati, you missed an insane. You missed a moment. You missed a moment in history. Um, if you Khabib s- Nurmagomedov just to set the table. Khabib Nurmagomedov after the fight jumped, jumped the fence, the ca- uh, attacked Dylan Dennis and the rest of his team, then suing brawl uh, Khabib's team. Uh, I forget their names. They jump in the cage. And sucker they punch. sucker punch uh, Conor McGregor while he's not looking, and it was just a brawl in the octagon, a brawl outside, and it was a. If you saw what happened with Uskategui and Darrell's uncle, you pretty oh, much oh. know what happened. I want to hear what they're trying to tell Khabib. Khabib must know right now he fucked up. They're getting him out of the case. They're, they haven't yep. even done the formalities. No, they're not going to. Ali Abdelaziz there. Fuck you, Ali Abdelaziz. They are guarding Khabib as they walk through a angry, angry crowd of Irishmen. Wow. Wow. Call in, ladies and gentlemen, 323-870-4051. Press 1 to get in the queue. People are throwing drinks at him. Dana White is alone in the octagon with the belt. This 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 entire scene is something completely insane. Um, I even say, Matt, what happened and whose fault? Oh, and Michael Buffer here to read the announcement. Wow. This is 
Like Fugati said, so many lawsuits. Yes. Um, yo, Juan David Hernandez. So how about that Jesse Vargas fight? <laughs> uh, Juan, this is for you. That was good. Wow. I, ladies and I don't even know how to describe and talk about the proceedings that we just saw. Um, this is your literal medium interaction right now. It's stunned. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, because if this was just the fight and they had, like, they talk shit, right? You know, there was going to be animosity after the fight. I knew that was going to be, but not obviously to that extent. Not anywhere like that. Not any, not anything criminal, which what is what we saw. It's exactly what we saw. So, got. you know, usually this, this part of the show is us talking about the main event and then the rest of the fight, breaking it down, take your calls, and we go about our night. But this is quite different. This is, like I said, something that will. Not just be a moment in time tonight and this weekend and this news cycle this week. No, this is a t- this is a moment that we will talk about forever in MMA history. This is now um, part of its history. And remember that. Uh, God, I may feel like such a fucking screw up here. Shout out me. Sorry, this is my head's all over the place. The moment when Mike Tyson went at the cops in the ring. Remember that. Yeah, I remember. This that. is eerily reminiscent of that, in my opinion. And I think that happened to be the the. The same night where he uh, bit Holyfield's mm-hmm. ear. Yes, it was. Yes, it so, was. I think it was the second uh, Holyfield fight. Sex. Yes, it was the rematch. Yep. It was in the, I believe, the fourth. It, it, round. it is just like that. And all, on top of that, sorry not to cut you off, but this a lot of thoughts in my head. I just need to talk. No, come um, on, let him out. Let him out. The Strike Force Nashville ball, brawl, which I, I know maybe not boxing fans who listen to the show may not know about, but Nick Diaz, uh, Jake Shields, uh, Nate Diaz, in. Uh, um, Oh, God, what's his name? One, The, the guy with the red stripe down his head, uh, on his hair. Uh, Miller. There's something Miller. Um, Jason Mayhem Miller. They had a big brawl on CBS, Strike Force. Remember Strike Force and Showtime, right? It was the only CBS event, and that event had a brawl in the, in the main event. That happened in the ring. It is like that, but this is so much worse because it's on such a bigger scale. This fight was the biggest MMA fight of the year, and it had that moment where not only is a UFC champion jumping out of the octagon after he just fought to fight his his opponent's team, but then Khabib's entire team to jump the octagon and attack Conor McGregor, sucker punch him when he's not the one partaking in the fight. Like Fugati said, so many lawsuits, so much is going to happen from this, so many ramifications that we can only speculate on, but it is Pandora's box now has been unleashed on MMA. The amount of lawsuits, the amount of suspensions. Um, the damage control is going to be crazy. The PR damage control that's going to be done. This is not what people want to see. I know like it's exciting. I know there's people out there that are, 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 are like, this is, that was exciting on some level. I understand that. It, I understand it. But it's also something that casual fans look at like, oh, those barbarians. You know, those, those, those criminal fighters, you know, all the time. You know, it's the same stereotypes that they use against our community all the time. So that's what I'm upset about. This only hurts the community and the culture of combat sports. When it was such a big event, it was such a big fight and moment already. And now it has such a negative and infamous tone to it. When we could be talking about Tony Ferguson, Anthony Pettis. Derek Lewis's huge com- uh, comeback KO against Alexander Volkov. Michelle Watterson saving her career against Felice Herring. Dominic Reyes at 10-0 and 0 with 10 knockouts being a true light heavyweight prospect. Something that we have not had in years. But no, we're everyone. The entire news cycle is going to be now about Khabib and the fuckery that we just saw. Shame on them. It, it's, it's disgusting. Uh, and it only hurts us. It, does, it doesn't do any good. The amount of traffic and clicks that this, these videos are going to do, it is nothing compared to the negative backlash that those casual sporting fans that watch football on Sunday and that they, oh, the cage fighting stuff. You know, it, this, this, this solidifies all of their opinions about us. And it's just unfortunate, man. Um, you know, call in. Three two three eight seven zero four zero five one. Obviously, I want your take on that melee, uh, Santiago. I want your take on this melee before let's actually get into the fights. We're gonna try to move on because it th- this night was really fun. 
Like I, it was it was a great night. It was a great a great series of fights that we saw, and it's a damn shame that this had to overtake the moment. You know, it really is because you know, this isn't a sport I watch. You mm-hmm. know, I, I watch this with you. You more or less have me interested in it from a certain perspective, but you know, I wanted to be here. I wanted to look at the fights. I was excited, uh, and just you know. It's depressing, you know, uh, as a, as a boxing scribe, you know, purely as boxing scribe, you know, like when I when I saw what happened with Usategui and the uncle, I was just like, why would you do this? Another like, moment that's the, eerily similar that to this. It, 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 it was unnecessary. It was completely asinine. And, you know, fuck, it doesn't get more guilty than when you hear them say uh, the uncle has ran out of the arena, you know, and. The fact that they went through what they went through for this as they closed out the card and the pay-per-view, it's just kind of like fucking hell, man. You, 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 cannot, you cannot imagine what tonight and tomorrow is going to be like. It is going to be there with an asterisk forever. Yep, and uh, I think we're going to try to do our best job to ignore that asterisk and actually talk about the fight. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's just... Let's talk, start at the top and work our right way down, um, and then move on. Let's move on to some DAZN stuff after that too. Cause yeah, we, for sure, for even sure. Even though we did not stay a hundred percent on point with the DAZN card, uh, we we were watching it. It was on our second TV here in the studio, uh, so we were watching it. So we'll get to the DAZN card as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it. Khabib versus Conor McGregor, man. Um, this is hard. This is really difficult to do, man. Um, Khabib obviously. Was I mean trying to sort of reverse my head into just talking about the fight without talking about what happened afterwards is difficult. But Khabib, you know, he has that Tyron Woodley style where he tries to suck you into his offense, suck you into a rhythm, and then he'll he pivot, and all of a sudden he's in the center of the octagon and he's the one being the aggressor. Yeah, he, almost and, almost like a reverse sprawl, right? And it's and it's really subtle. And I think if you're a fighter in in the cage and you're working the ebb and flow of it and the rhythm of it, you don't see it. But that's why I think did, uh, did Connor, uh, I mean, did Khabib a lot of uh, service is that he he allowed Connor to feel comfortable. He allowed Connor to feel like he was in control, and then he would take away that control instantly. Whether it be the right hand knockdown in the second round, uh, whether it be him all of a sudden pivoting out and not really pivot, but you know, pivoting out to the center. And then going for that double leg and not pressing Connor up against the cage, he he would allow Connor to get sucked into thinking that he would be the one throwing the offense, and then all of a sudden he would have to react to it. And I think he did a good job of making Connor double think what he was doing in there at times as well. And he definitely kept the striking at bay. Like mm-hmm. I, this was the tamest I've seen Connor McGregor. You know, barring the fights that I have seen leading up to this, the Mayweather fight, he definitely, definitely locked that, locked down his his offense because you could see that while McGregor did have an idea what he wanted to do, you just he was do he we couldn't do it. He was hesitant to try, and more often than not, it was those lulls that Nurmagomedov took advantage of to yes. land that overhand right and just completely buckle and change the look of the fight for McGregor. Yeah, and e- even um, even in the lulls, he was making Connor the more tired fighter. He was the one on top. He was the one pressing Connor up, up against the cage. He was the one making Connor carry his weight. Um, it was just a good game plan from Khabib. Um, the the improved on both sides, the improved striking of Khabib, which I think we saw here, and obviously the improved grappling of Connor. I think it's good things we can sort of take away from this. Obviously, it's harder to do from the post fight interaction, but. If there's one sort of positive we can take away from both guys here is that Khabib obviously imp- has improved his striking throughout his career. Yeah, it because showed here. it showed, especially when he realized that he probably wasn't going to have as much success. And, um, you know, for me at least, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, layoff, including everything. Uh, McGregor still looked look pretty good, yeah, looked pretty did. sharp. I think it was just the, the style clash that really, you know, had him concerned because he had been submitted mm-hmm. before, you know, a la Nate Diaz, and uh, here's the second one. And um, I don't know. Uh, we really can't say anything more about that just because, like, for obvious reasons, we kind of know where things are going to be going uh, for one guy at least. Well, we don't know where anything's going in, in, for, for one guy. We don't. It could be going to take jail time. I don't think he's going to get the Conor McGregor service in New York City when Conor threw the dolly. I don't see it. 
I think I think Khabib's going to get more of a book thrown at him, or at least from the athletic commission standpoint, I think he gets a he gets a suspension. I don't think he gets away with just a fine. I doubt it for at this big of an event. If this was again sort of a sideshow where no one was watching, maybe they just ignore it and move on. But this was in front of the entire sporting world's eyes. Conor McGregor and Khabib dominated the sporting cycle and news cycle this week. They were holding court, and that's what happened. I know we're getting back to it and that whole shit, and we shouldn't. But it's harder to say going forward what's going to happen with both these guys. We have legal issues to go through. That's always a a question mark. We don't know how that's going to go down, especially when we're dealing with celebrities, athletes. It's hard to tell. Um, Khabib, I don't think he's going to get the, the preferential treatment that Connor did. I just don't. I, I know the justice system. It's not going to work that way. Um, but sort of digressing back to the fight a little bit. Um, Khabib's strategy and the one that he always has is that he is a rising tide. He is the one that's slowly going to creep up on you to where you cannot breathe anymore and you suffocate from water in your lungs. Connor is that tsunami where he's trying to hit you with that one huge wave, and if it doesn't work and you survive it, you survive it. You know, Khabib's one of those you don't realize how much trouble you're in. Until that fourth round hits, you had a good third round, but all of a sudden, man, I'm really fucking tired. And he gets to the ground, and you really have nothing. You, all of a sudden, you have no energy. You thought you had all this energy, and you don't. Uh, so Khabib, I think, uh, and performance-wise, 10 out of 10. I mean, he performed. His striking was great. His grappling was great. Obviously, Connor negated a lot of the grappling uh, at times. Uh, but I think that's more of a credit to Connor than it is a disservice no, or no, discredit for, for sure, to, to because, Khabib. You know? uh, Really, with with that submission kind of being exactly how I thought that uh, Khabib was going to get the win, I'm surprised that it didn't come in the second round. And more so, especially when he did throw that salvo of punches while he was on the ground in top position. Yes, call in 323-870-4051 if you want to talk about this fight and the rest of the card. Uh, Sonny in the chat scene, but you know Dana will strip him. That's a good point, man. Like Dana doesn't love Khabib like he loves Connor. Let's be completely honest here. No, I mean, um, if he ever needed a legitimate reason to like do what he wanted to do in the first place, he has. He Khabib fucking gave it to him on a silver platter. He could one hundred percent, one hundred percent strip Khabib and have an excuse to do it. But uh, digressing a little bit, let's get to the the co-main, co-main event because the co-main was so good. The and, co-main event was awesome, and it, it has you, none of this shit attached to it. It has no. It was just amazing MMA, and it had you laughing, and it had amazing post-fight moment as well. Uh, with uh, T- uh, Tony Ferguson on the ground crying, I mean, really emotionally crying, and Eddie Bravo, his longtime jiu-jitsu trainer at uh, 10th Planet, you know, really, I didn't catch everything he was saying, but just saying, like, you you did this, like, this is your moment, like, be happy, like, it's, I'm, like, sort of supporting him being emotional in a way, and I, it was just a great moment, uh, but the fight itself, God, first off, Anthony Pettis, I see the callers, don't worry, um, We'll get, to you, we'll get to you callers after uh, we break down this co-main event. Press 1 to get in the queue. Uh, Anthony Pettis dropped Tony Ferguson early. Uh, gave him some really, really good punishment. But Tony Ferguson, you know, after maybe the first few minutes where he his legs looked a little bit off. Oh, that, that right? one Their leg one, kick had you hurting. Yeah, he, he was limping a bit. And obviously the, the commentary team was a little bit concerned about... The ACL injury. Yeah, of course. Uh but once that sort of ring rust, it became faded, a fight. It became a fun oh fight. Oh my god. god! Both guys were just throwing at you it, know. It's not that they were like hellacious shots either, but they were landing clean. They were landing shots. consistently, and both guys looked like they were having a blast, and they're just teeing off mm-hmm. against one another. And really, the only climactic, anticlimactic moment of the fight was the fact that in that process. Uh, Anthony Pettis broke his right hand and could not continue. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Though I think it's a good job on his corner. I know an MMA, uh, an MMA uh, for maybe boxing heads out there, they don't understand this, but corner stoppages aren't normal in MMA. That's a, that's a rarity. That's a unicorn in the sport. It really is. Um, that's been something that we've been trying to implement in our culture a little bit more in MMA because boxing obviously has that where it's, it's a little more respectable to, you know, live on to fight another day. You know, that sort of... Uh, you know, ethos is, is true, I think, in boxing. And it's starting to get there in, in MMA. So I'm happy uh, that uh, Duke Rufus stopped the fight for Anthony Pettis. 
He should not have sent him out there, so I'm, I'm glad about that. But like you said, phenomenal fight. And also, it was a Tony Ferguson fight and an Anthony Pettis fight. Both guys were doing matrix like shit tony ferguson and was they were doing, trying to one up the other guy oh, that's what i amazing. locked like when tony ferguson came up to the cage with a jumping punch uh jumping superman punch mm -hmm. and it was just kind of like oh you can do it i'll, I'll try I'll, i'm gonna one up you right there and it, it was just fun it was really entertaining to see uh, uh yeah and then obviously you know this the the standing elbows uh from tony ferguson are just lethal lethal shots uh but just phenomenal stuff for tony ferguson god knows what happens for him next obviously we have the nate diaz dustin Poirier fight uh, in a few weeks, obviously, whatever's happening with Connor and Khabib and the fallout of this, I think has ramifications for Tony Ferguson. So it's a bit of a wait and see factor here going forward. We're gonna head out to a caller right now, uh, seven seven three, seven seven three. Uh, who is this, and where are you calling from? Hello. Hello. Who is this? Hello? Uh, who is this? Hey, and who are you calling from? Hey, it's uh, uh, Fernando calling from uh, Chicago. What's up, Fernando? How you doing? Hey, man, I'm uh, no buzz. I'm not gonna lie. It's okay, uh, man. It's okay. I'm high. It's okay. Hey, real quick. Hey, okay, good, great. Hey, uh, I actually I saw this. I saw this coming a mile away. So he beating uh, Mc, uh, McGregor. I mean, I don't know how people didn't see it, but I saw it. Mm -hmm. Um, real quick question. Uh, Mikey Garcia, what do you have him as your pound for pound? Huh. Um, I don't know. Mikey's one of those guys. It, it his style is so. I'm gonna use the word basic, and that might seem harsh, but that's the word we use. Basic. That it's hard to compare him with a little more of the stylistic guys of the di division. Uh, not division of of the sport, like an Usyk, like Lomachenko, like Crawford. Um, he doesn't even have the power of guys like Earl Spence, so it's sort of hard to compare him. But he's obviously up there. He's skilled. He's multiple division champion. Um, he's probably in the top ten somewhere. I, I haven't really thought about that much. Matt, you don't have him. You don't have him on your top five. Um, not off the top of my head, to be quite honest. Um, I got to maybe give it a little more thought because my top three in any order is Usyk, Lomachenko, and Crawford, and then like guys like Canelo are in the top five in my opinion. So there's only one spot left for him. So I don't know if he's he makes the cut, so to speak. Hey, you think, uh, real quick, do you think Lomachenko makes a cut being uh, only fighting 11 fights and loot and uh, having one loss? Absolutely. Just like guys like uh, Inoue you make the cut, even though he has very little fights. He only has, I think, like 15 fights, and he's a three-division champion. Um, you know, and I'm, I come from the MMA world a little bit, so, like, losses don't mean as much, especially when it's your second pro fight right. against right. Orlando I Salido. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I just think that, uh, you know, having uh, four division, uh, being a four division champion, that would earn him at least a top five spot. It's not just the divisional champion who you beat, right? So, like, guys like Sergey Lepinets at 140, like, are we going to count that as the same two guys like uh, Robert Easter win? Like, those are obviously different wins. Right. So, just to say yep. four division champ, like, that's, that's a thing. And that automatically guarantees you a spot somewhere. That's not the case. Like Adrian Broner is a three division champion. You know, we we don't see Adrian Broner on any pound for pound list anymore. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I give you that. I just don't think Lomachenko has beat like who 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 did he beat last to prove that he's a pound for pound champion? Linares, Guillermo Rigondeaux. Rigondeaux was come on now. He was two divisions below him. I, I wouldn't count that as a as a win. Even even Lomachenko himself. I count it as a win. That wasn't a win. I, I count it, it as himself. a win. Very quickly. I count it as a win because before that fight started and it happened, everyone was giving Ring and a shot. Everyone was hyping up Ring down that fight. A I lot didn't. of people I know you weren't I'm not necessarily I was. But the community was. The community validated that fight. It, it didn't validate Canelo Amir Khan, did not validate uh, Triple G, Kel Brook, but it did validate Lomachenko, Gamma Rigondeaux. Both guys multi gold medalists in the Olympics. I, I do give him a little more credit for that one because the community did. But you don't think that was more like the casual fans that, that gave him credit for that win? Um, I don't know. I think, I think obviously you have a portion of, let's say, like, uh, like, top rank haters, like people that really don't like Bob Arum, 
they want they bigged up Gilmore Ringendale, right? And I think Right. I don't know if the, I don't know if casuals cared about that fight. That's the thing. I think that was a very combat sport insular fight. Like it did do good ratings on ESPN, but it didn't it didn't do you know transcendental numbers on ESPN. That was still a very much an in boxing yeah, in that bubble fight. Very in house, very uh, I th- I think hardcores were hyped on it heading into it and then it turned out that Lomachenko was just that good and he was obviously the size advantage was that much of a factor and then we changed our minds after the fight. And I, I get obviously hindsight it is twenty twenty, and I think we can use hindsight to our advantage sometimes. Like we can use it to say to add context to a situation uh, just from a, a history perspective. But we validated that fight. We as a community said that that fight was legit. I think it's very hard to now go I back on Lomachenko. I don't, know. I, 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 I don't know because even Lomachenko himself said no, he I, I agree. That way. No, no, you he are said, right. You are right. But the community validated to- it. The community validated it. I mean, go back and listen to podcasts before that fight happened. Go back and listen to callers call in and pick Gamma Ringendale. I was on shows that had a lot of callers. And I remember half of the callers calling in, picking Gamma Ringendale for that fight. Like, we thought it was 50 50. Hmm. Not necessarily me or you or Loma, or not everyone, but as a consensus, yeah, we validated that fight. We thought it was 50 50, and then it turned out to be. No, we were fucking wrong. You know, you know what I thought about that fight? I thought about that fight as much as I thought as Mikey Garcia moving up to fight Errol Spence. We all think that's a ridiculous fight. Mm-hmm. We all know Mikey had zero chance of beating uh, Errol Spence at 147. That's the, exactly the same way I felt about Lomachenko fighting Rigondeaux. No, I, hey, look, that is an apt comparison. But the difference is... Is that we as a as a community always thought Spence Garcia was a bad matchup. That wasn't the same with with Lomachenko Rigondeaux. Even though on paper it should be it, it should we should have the same consensus opinion about it. We should, but we don't. We look at Spence Garcia more along the lines of Amir Khan, uh, Canelo uh, of Triple G Brook instead of Loma Rigondeaux when they all should be counted as the same. They all should be looked at the same. Right. Well, Fernando, do you have any more? Uh, right. Any more? Uh, uh, no, points? I just want to say, uh, hey, keep doing a good job, man. And uh, you know, since you broke away from uh, TB, you know, from the boxing voice, you're doing a great job. Just keep doing a good job. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, call back in, uh, and thank you for the very uh, random call, Fernando. I I like that. That was fun. That was a, a a boxing debate about nothing that happened this weekend. You know what? I needed that. I yeah. really, I know, like people in the a, chat. It was, a, it was a welcome distraction. I know people in the chat were, were shitting on you, Fernando, and don't, and I know you were a little bit buzzed. Don't worry about it. We needed that palate cleanser because this 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 entire night has been something else. But we're going to another caller and another Fernando. Uh, oh, is that Fern? I believe so. It probably is. It's a three two three number. Fern, is this you? It is I. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you off your tits? Have you been smoking something? <laughs> I have, and I've been drinking. So, uh, shout out to MCR. Great show, guys. Thank you. Thank I, you, I um, wanted to come out and support, man. Um, you're doing your thing, man. I, I really appreciate you seeing it on a weekly basis, man. Because shout out to MCR. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Always uh, appreciate your support as well. How you doing, Fern? Did you enjoy the fights? I, I did, man. Um, it was a little light for me. Just I don't have uh, DAZN. Uh, I know. I know we got to stay on topic, but um, we, we don't have to. We, we, we don't have to stay on topic, man. Fernando oh. ruined that completely. Let's be honest. You know, I caught the end of it. It's going to be a, a hard, uh, a hard car, call to follow. But yeah, <laughs> I, I'm Buzz as well, Fern. So shout out to Fern from Chicago. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man, no great night of fights. Yo, hold on, hold on, Fern, that, Fern, very quickly. I instantly had in my head, you know, the meme of the two Spider Men pointing at each other. That, that that's <laughs> what that's what this follow up call is, by the way. Uh, no, no, shout out to uh, my brother on the east. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, no great night of fights. Uh, you know, um, I'm glad I was able to catch the fight, the co-main event. I, I'll be honest with you, I have, uh, I'm the this would be one of the first full events I catch for UFC, and mm-hmm. it was really entertaining, man. The co-main event, I have no idea who those guys were. They 
they put it out there, man. It was a great fight. The, the main event, uh, I was thinking just based on uh, on Connor's Floyd fight, as far as I, from what I know, UFC fights are, uh, championship fights are five rounds, five minutes, and just based on cardio and knowing that uh, Khabib is a submission kind of guy, I figured that if it was more ground work um, as the fight progressed, I eventually McGregor would submit and sure enough uh, choke out. Uh, the events that transpired afterwards were just crazy. I, I don't know what happens afterwards. Again, I'm an ultra casual fan, but it was definitely something something to watch. And I'm glad I, I, I you know, I tuned in. It was, it was a great night. I agree uh, with everything. I'm glad that uh, you enjoyed it. I know you are much more of a casual MMA fan. You're much more of a boxing head. So it's always good to see these events sort of uh, spill out to more of the boxing fandom. Um, now, as mm-hmm. as a boxing fan, because obviously boxing fans, I think, are a little bit more uh, conditioned to misbehavior from athletes than other sporting fan groups, I would right. say. Does, yep. this, does that post-fight interaction or brawl does that leave a bad taste in your mouth? Does that make you not want to watch Absolutely another fight? Not. Okay. Absolutely not. I'll, I'll be. I won't lie to you. On Monday, or your, if you have a, uh, you know, follow up show, any kind of follow up show, I'll be tuning in. But typically, what I would do on on any kind of fight of this magnitude, uh, boxing or MMA, you know, I do check the uh, the Yahoo feeds, like the Yahoo News, mm-hmm. to see what what happens afterwards, and it does make me interested in wanting to follow up on what happens what happens next. So no, I, I, you know, I'll be tuning in and I'll be keeping an eye out on, on McGregor and, and Khabib. I mean, well, definitely makes me interested in what happens. I, I, I agree. Fern. I think that's interesting to note the idea of, um, how many people are like Fern that like are completely casual. They see this and now they want to know what happens next. Now this becomes a saga. This becomes a saga that it's a trilogy fight. Uh, series between them and it gets bigger each time because just all the drama attached to it. Maybe. That's a silver lining in it, I guess. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, and and again, I, I don't follow the sport enough, but I mean, to me, McGregor didn't do enough to merit a rematch, but I would be interested in it as a casual fan to be able to watch a rematch if, if that were to even be in, in the cards. Uh, I agree, Fern. A- any other uh, points? Uh Anything else? Any observations? No. No, no, not at all. I mean, a great night of fights. And, um, yeah, I'm glad I'm tuning in. Well, thank you, Fern. I hope you have a great night. Uh, stay frosty out there, man. Uh, we need to get we need to hang out with, like, the whole crew again, man. Like, that'll, JP, Info Joe. That'll be us. a special moment for MCR right there. I miss it, man. I miss it. Anyways, we're going to head out to the next caller. Um, actually, it's Ron, so we can make him wait a little bit. <laughs> do we do we want to quickly talk about the Derek Lewis Volkov fight? I think we should because we haven't talked about that, and that's really the only other fight I feel like we need to get to. To yeah, be quite honest, yeah. But like, what is there really to say about that fight? You know, what I mean, I got, oh, you, I gotta say this. I gotta say this. There is, I think, I think Derek Lewis is now tied for heavyweight record all time with Cain Velasquez. With Cain Velasquez for third round knockouts, right? That's exactly what they said. They that ha- that is an insane insane stat that you are that guy where you, yeah comeback knockouts i i hold that record god Derek lewis and that post fight interview just salute man i oh like yeah you said, there's not much else to say volkov fought great he got caught at the very last 10 seconds of the fight and got dropped and finished with some brutal right hands uh Derek lewis now i think he is 15 and 1 in his last 16 pro fights it's impressive which i yeah it's it's an insane stat when you think about heavyweight MMA. Like MMA alone, people take a lot more losses, but heavyweight MMA, um, the best, heavy, the second best heavyweight MMA fighter of all time is Randy Couture at nineteen and twelve record. Okay, Mark Hunt is like universally considered a top, you know, perennial heavyweight for like a decade plus, right? He has a five hundred record. So a guy like Derek Lewis who has now sixteen and one or fifteen and one in his last sixteen fights. That's fucking insane. And he is the worst, best fighter I have ever seen. I've never seen a guy that obviously has that much flaws in his game, no cardio, obvious physical ailment in his back that he has talked about a lot, and yet gets those insane athletic-style knockouts. And he looked exactly what you would expect an out-of-shape guy to look like and still pull off the come-from-behind knockout. Insane. 
It's insane stuff. We're going to head out to uh, Ron, the mastermind over at Fighter IQ. Go check out his YouTube channel and also co host of TBV. Ron, how are you doing? I hope you enjoyed <laughs> this week. Yo, uh, yo, yo I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, hey. before anything, <laughs> wow, right? Just wow. Oh, my God. Yo, I'm a big boxing fan. I'm a big MMA fan, but UFC stole the whole entire day. Like, I was saying this, but it, they, they shut shit down today, man. That was. A great card, man. Mm-hmm. I don't. I mean, I didn't really get to hear all the show because I'm like reading all the news and like trying to like read all the back end stuff. But um, yeah, that was a great card. Um, I skimmed through like Michelle Waterson. I thought she looked great. I liked her striking. Like I was happy she won because I think she represents um, women fighting very well. And you know, just seeing how she came from like Adam weight and she like fights these physically strong big girls. And performs very well, and her more tie looked better. You know, I thought that was great. Um, you know, Ray's looked really good. I think he should have got the knockout. You know, credit for that, but I understand. Um, you guys mentioned Derek Lewis. I was telling people I was around, like, yo, I know this looks sloppy on Derek Lewis, but if you watch Derek Lewis, you still have to fear. You have to watch out. This dude just somehow miraculously plays possum. I don't know if he does it on purpose or not, but he's always like, I'm hurt or I'm tired. And then he just knocks the guy out. And I called it. And, yo, this dude literally, if he's hurt, you have to literally get, like, straight up just question if he's hurt. Like, you can't predict this dude. He's always just holding some crazy bomb every time. And I think the whole eye poking thing, I don't know if he was actually hurt. I don't know if he was playing possum. Maybe with was excuse because he was getting beat up. I don't trust Derek Lewis. I don't trust that dude at all. I wouldn't trust him. Fuck that. <laughs> Derek Lewis is a scary dude because you just can't read that dude. That's like an unreadable guy, and that's the problematic fighting him. Um, and then the counter could be, like you guys touched on, everybody was like, why is could be running around? What's going on? This is terrible. But no one knows, like, the, the, the bad blood, the, the bloodline of the whole religion, countrymen, bus throwing stuff and all that. So... Um, I think B became a star, like a global star today. Mm. I think what was sad is he had like a Marvin Hagler moment. I mean, you guys know uh, about when Marvin Hagler was in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Know what you're talking about. I remember that moment very indelibly. Nice reference. Yo, yeah, hold, on, like, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Ron, hold on. Santiago with a thesaurus out of his ass here, just making up words on the spot. Okay, now Ron, you can continue your call. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. I got love. But, yeah, it was like, you know, Marvin Hagler had his moment in the U.K. where he was supposed to be the champion. And sure enough, there were people were throwing stuff in the ring, had an escort him out. He never got to, you know, enjoy that moment. Even though he won the title, we all knew this was the title. Like, that was the passing of the torch to Khabib. And, you know, unfortunately, he didn't get that. And if people haven't been to the T-Mobile Arena, like, it's big. Like, 23,000 people. I had to take five escalators. Matt, I'm sure you took hell of escalators too to just get to the top. And I, I'm only imagining what something dangerous, like, a, I don't know, something hard being thrown that high down, like, to do to people. So I wish Dana just took the risk, but I get it, you know, because, you know, I'm a big fight fan and I always feel like fighters put so much on the line. They deserve to have that moment. But, the T-Mobile is a humongous arena, and I can't even imagine someone throwing stuff from that high and, and what type of damage that would do to people. So um, Khabib did exactly what, you know, everyone predicted. He was going to maul Connor down, and everyone was pretty much waiting that could Connor actually land these early counter-punching. And I think tonight Tony Ferguson showed that he – Tony Ferguson could be is the fight, straight up, because – I think Connor was being too defensive and waiting to do the pull Connors and being selective in his punch selection, um, his wide stance to get like leverage and shots, um, you know, and eventually let him get take down so much. I think Tony Ferguson tonight showed just crazy grit, you know, that heart and a fun uh, stylistic pressure kind of fight where Connor didn't. And I think could be Tony Ferguson for like the 15th, 20th time. Can we please get that fight? Can we get the Tony Ferguson could be fight, please? No. <laughs> MMA gods do, won't allow it. Do you think they're gonna 
Oh, go ahead. I said the MMA gods won't allow it. Uh, now, what I think is going to happen next, I have no idea, man. Like, Dana White's at the presser right now. He is not happy. Uh, some breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Three of Khabib's teammates have been arrested. One of his managers, not Ali Abdelaziz, has been arrested as well. Um, there is video going viral online right now of massive brawls happening on the Strip and uh, in Vegas. Please, anyone listening right now in Vegas, be safe. Please be safe. Uh, people are getting knocked out. People are getting attacked. Uh, this is getting serious. And uh, I have no idea what happens next because of it. W- whether we get Khabib versus Tony, a rematch with Connor, uh, Khabib getting stripped, everything is a possibility at this point right now. Yeah, I mean, I, hopefully, um, you know, there's some positive things that come out of this. Obviously, this is a very dark situation. But, you know, if you guys are just tuning in to MMA for the first time, you know, cause it, or if you're just tuning in to MCR Radio, you know, um, please, you know, support the sport um, at these ugly times. You know, support the podcast. You know, these guys will keep you in tune with all the news so that if you want to follow the drama that happens after this and, and kind of understand the storyline better, and the potential matchups and all the, the aftermath stuff, you know, you want to hit subscribe. You know, you guys are real cool, and it's a good time, you know, to catch these guys because they're very dedicated to the, the sport, and, you know, they're willing to talk to you guys. All you guys to come call, you know, on the platform, all that stuff. So if you're a big MMA fan as well as boxing too, because they also cover boxing, um, you know, they'll support the sport, and, you know, that's And so, outside of that, you know, I'll let you guys get some extra callers, show some love, talk a little bit more. We got that Inouye fight. So yes. You guys stay up a little bit later. You know? I'm not saying but, it for that one. Come on. All right, guys. <laughs> Have a good one, Ron. Uh, obviously, go check out him uh, with the Boxing Voice uh, at the Boxing Voice on YouTube. I think they have a show tomorrow, obviously, Sunday and Thursday. That's their days. Your show's championship rounds on Patreon. Yep, yep. Uh, on Tuesday, patreon.com. Not Tuesday, sorry. At 2 p.m. I don't know why I said Tuesday. On tomorrow, Sunday, if you want to see sort of a more of a breakdown on this, uh, patreon.com forward slash Mixed Hammer Radio. And obviously our show Monday through Friday, live on YouTube, podcast form, uh, iTunes, Spotify, Art Radio, etc. I want to quickly say something. Because um, Les- Leslie Smith, shout out to Leslie Smith, one of the great people in the sport, going on Twitter and saying, and to effect, I don't, I don't have the tweet up, but basically to the effect of the entire fight promotion of this event was built off of Connor throwing that dolly and having an assault against uh, Khabib and his team. Assaulting Khabib and his team. And then everything after that on the press conferences have been about religion, ethnicity, um, language. Uh, things that get anyone upset and riled up, even if they're not promoting a fight. So this was manifested into reality based off the fight promotion. I think that was a good point by Leslie Smith that we spoke this, not necessarily we, us, or you listening there as fans, but the UFC spoke this into existence. You know, I've seen uh, other people say that this this was always going to happen. And that's a good take. I get it. I, I completely understand it. Does not excuse what happened with Khabib. Does not excuse it. Just doesn't. Um, I can understand it. I can get it completely doesn't make it right i can understand a lot of things that aren't right from an ethical morality standpoint uh and th- this wasn't it yeah you, know, you know not here clutching my pearls it's the fight game it is what it is khabib eventually is gonna be back in it and i'm gonna be watching this fight doing shows about it because that's my job but this was disgusting just like the entire fight promotion to this event has been disgusting but we're gonna go over to Mr. Jolly, JP from Long Beach. JP, how you doing, man? Hey, man, is this the like the biggest night ever for UFC? You know, me being a casual, I, I digress to what you'll say here. Uh, first off, you get 10 points for using the word digress. 10 points right there for you. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think it is. I think this is probably... If not the biggest, it's what top two, top three. It's up there. I, th- I think this does two million pay per view buys. Two million. So I listened to the fight via 
YouTube with no footage mm. is how interested I was. So I think that's uh, an accomplishment for the UFC for a very, 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 very casual fan like myself. Santiago, how you doing, man? Everything good? I'm doing good, JP. Happy to have you and Fern on here for the calls. And uh, yeah, I would say that is a success because uh, you know me, dude. I I'm more of a boxing guy than anything else. But like even this fight had my attention. You know, uh, really the uh, the DAZN fight had been more of an afterthought to me than anything else. So I, I get definitely get where you're coming from with this too. Yeah, man, because I'm, you know, you know me, I'm definitely with the shits. And they definitely got with the shits tonight. This is going to be trending. This is going to be on all kinds of news. Everybody's going to know about it. People who had no interest at all, who had never known this fight existed, will will see what ensued after the fight. So yep. I think, you know... In this case, the old adage applies, uh, any publicity is good publicity. So one more narrative before I go, and I'm just looking at Twitter. Uh, one guy says, uh, Khabib is the Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather of MMA, unbeatable but unbearable to watch for casual fan. What do you think about that? Um, I've heard that comparison before. I don't know if it's completely accurate, but I don't think it's completely wrong either. Um, so I'm I'll, I'll I'll give it like a one one thumbs up, not two thumbs up, but one thumbs up. I I I can dig it. I, I'm I'm okay with it. I'm not going to argue against it. Very well, then, my friend. Hey, I'll see y'all soon, man. I'm out. See you, JP. Hope you have a good night, man. Going out to uh, the queen of New York City. The Dominican Nightmare. <laughs> Monster Peace. Monster Peace, how you doing? <laughs> the Dominican Nightmare, Jesus Christ. You earned that one, Monster. Hi. You definitely earned that one. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. What a great night. I don't know why people are complaining about what happened. I mean, you put two animals uh, in a cage to go at it, they're going to retaliate, you know, um, eventually they're going to retaliate the worst way. But monster, possible. monster, so I'm not, monster. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, listen, I am not going to say this was disgusting. I am not going to say this was uncool for. I'm not going to say none of that because this has been happening for a while. We've been seeing the progression mm -hmm. of, what Con how Connor has been going at Khabib. And some may say even Khabib going to Connor. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people, you know, Connor's reason for attacking Khabib at the bus was because Khabib, for some reason, cornered his boy. But he didn't even do anything to his boy. No, he he no, 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 no. He slapped him. That's, that's, he slapped him. Okay. Okay. C come on, I monster. I slap in that video. Maybe. No, wait, 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 wait. The video that I saw didn't have a slap. Th there is a slap. But There's if slap. you could, if you could, if you can show me that video that he did, by all means, I'm, I, I don't have a problem. Show it to me. That's okay. But anyways, it started with that. You know what I mean? But this is the difference between the way Khabib approached that guy and the way Connor approached Khabib. When Khabib approached that guy, there was. No other casualties around. It was just that guy. We can at least agree to that. But when Connor did it, there were securities, there were cops, there were every, not so much securities, but there was like a bus with people that had nothing to do with this beef. It was just a whole bunch of shit show that just really didn't need to happen. It, when Connor has so much money that he could have easily handled this a different way. He did not have to do that, but he did it because that's just the way Connor is. He likes attention. He likes to act like he's really, really tough. And then when it's time to get in that ring and do what he needs to but, do, but Mon Nate Diaz chokes him out. Monster. Khabib chokes him out. Monster. It's, it's kind of obvious. I knew Khabib was going to win this fight. I knew it because it's the same thing that happened with Nate. I knew it was going to happen. I am not going to say this was disgusting. There's no reason for me to say that. We knew this was, this was disgusting from the beginning. I am not going That's to repeat it because it is what it is. We all kind of knew this was going to happen. 
I have a couple. Go ahead. Of, I have a couple points, Monster. Obviously, you are more okay with it because you're a degenerate boxing fan, just like the rest of us. So we have been accepting <laughs> racism, <laughs> uh, sexism in our sport, bullshit, criminals in our mm. sport, wife beaters in our sport. Mm. We accept that all. So mm -hmm. this, obviously, mm -hmm. for people like us, it's a blip on the radar. But for, mm -hmm. but for, um, I don't know, Becky down the street that that watches, <laughs> I don't know, NBA on Tuesday and like maybe a Sunday night football game every once in a while, and she sees it on her phone. Does she have a positive thought about it or a negative thought about it? I'm assuming negative. No, she's gonna have a negative. And that's 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 where I come in. That's where I'm coming in to have the issue with because obviously we as the, as the community are gonna still accept Khabib and we're, we're gonna move on. Of course we will. Khabib, in the, in the long, grand mm -hmm. scheme of things, this, this is not the most despicable thing that a fighter has done, obviously. <laughs> How, however, it's one that will go viral. It's one that we, us hardcores, will have to explain to the casuals. So now Khabib mm -hmm. has put us in a position to have to explain his bullshit. And I get, I get your point about Connor initiating a lot of this, and you're right. But that doesn't excuse Khabib attacking people or his teammates jumping Connor in the cage and sucker punching him. That's, absolutely. That, that, no, absolutely. We, we can all sit and agree that Khabib and Connor dealing with their shit in the cage it should have been finished. If y'all don't like each other, still fine. Don't shake each other's hands. Move on. But to jump each other exactly. after the I, fight, after the fight, when it should yeah. be squashed, yeah. come on, man. Like That's some bitch shit. I'm not happy with that. I, I have to explain yeah. it now to casuals. And I'm I'm yeah. just I'm upset about that reason. And again, I think bringing yeah. back the history of Conor McGregor and Khabib and their promotion, which I've already done, is not about mm -hmm. pointing fingers. It's not about saying, "Oh, Conor, you know, led to this or Khabib did." It's this promotion from the get go has been manifesting this situation. It has it has. Oh, yes. So so that is what we should be talking about. We shouldn't be pointing fingers at Conor or really Khabib. Point fingers at the entire promotional yeah. bent of let, know, let's let's point at each other's ethnicity and question it. Let's point at each other's religion and question it. Point at each other's families and question it. And while I think maybe Connor's points about Ali Abdelaziz are completely true, and we should be talking about that, it was init it was <laughs> initiating conflict with a dangerous and downright criminal group of people. Let's not forget who Khabib runs yeah. with. He runs with fucking dictators in Chechnya that commit genocide against people. This is not people to fuck with. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and and I agree, which is why I'm saying what I'm saying. It's like, dude, you're dealing with people here who have a history of violence mm -hmm. already. Yes. In their in their repertoire. It's like this is their life. And then here comes Connor with this and this is the thing also that I don't understand about Connor. Connor, you you I get the mind game. I get it. And that is something that you learn in fight school. You must, you know, defeat your opponent mentally before you can defeat him physically. We all know this. Mm -hmm. This is a very standard lesson in fight game. However, Connor takes it to an extreme that sometimes you have to ask yourself, boy, are you scared that you have to go this far? Like, he doesn't, he doesn't limit uh, I don't know that. Say, I don't, let me write down the things I'm going to say, and let me see if I, see if I can find a limit. Monster, gonna, monster. I have a limit. Monster. I think Conor McGregor <laughs> is a lot of things, but scared is not one of them. The guy that jumped in against Floyd okay, Mayweather. The, the guy that, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on let, me, let me finish, let me finish. The guy that jumped in against Khabib <laughs> after two years, that guy is not so scared that he has to invent or bring up this really extreme shit talking to try to psych out his opponents. I think that's just him. It's too like, much. like it might be it's too much. It might be much. too much for you. It might be, and it might be too much for him. And now, and how it brought this situation into 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 existence. But yeah. this is this has always been Connor. This is not new. Connor's I always know, been this always, person. And because of and because Connor. of this, you know because of this, he sells yeah. millions of pay per views. Because of him, this sold two yeah. million pay per views. Let's be honest. I know. I, I, I get it. Listen, I get it. We Like you mentioned earlier, we all get it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, like, sometimes I think about these things and I go like, yo, this is, 
this is gonna come back and bite him in the ass one day. Like that's more accurate. Yes. Yeah. That that's more you accurate. You hear what I'm yes. saying? Like, no, no, no. I I agree. With, I agree with that monster. Million, supposedly, uh, allegedly, he made a hundred million dollars off the Floyd fight. Like you shouldn't be talking like this anymore. Like you you already made it. Like people already know who you are. Like there's times where you just gotta like chill, bro, chill. But you're right. That's just who he is. Mm-hmm. Like so, you go back and you go is. back and see him on the regional scene, he was the same exact person just without tattoos. Yeah. And without the millions of dollars <laughs> and nice suits. Yeah. He had a bad haircut and he was eating blueberries in a one apartment a one bedroom apartment and now he's in two mansions <laughs> flying jets around. That's the only difference. Uh, but I will agree with you that <laughs> right. I, I will agree with you one hundred percent that like you put stuff out in the universe, it's going to come back and haunt you. It's going to come back and get it's you. It's going to come back it, it, and haunt you. That hunt 100% you, is this true. Is and obviously, obviously, Connor, I think, knows that. Like, Con- I don't think Connor is that upset that this happened. Let's be, a- I think Connor realized that, <laughs> like, th- like, you know what I mean? Like, let's be, like, Connor's a street dude. Like, he was like, okay, like, I think he would be more upset about them sucker punching him. That would be his only talking yeah. point, in my opinion, is that they sucker punched him. I think. I think him yeah. attacking Dylan Dennis, I don't think he's going to have that much an issue with that, to be honest. It's the sucker punching. <laughs> but, I mean, even street dudes do that, though. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was crazy, man. I Listen, when, K- when Khabib won, I jumped up from my chair. I was so happy mm-hmm. that he won. And I love McGregor. I've been following McGregor for, years for now for like four years. And I really, really do like McGregor, but this whole Khabib situation just made me just see Khabib all the way. <laughs> I wanted really to see Khabib win because he, Connor was talking a hell of a lot of shit, man. Mm-hmm. If you talk that much shit, you better back it up. And he always, he thinks he's, I don't know, man. He just doesn't have a limit. But he, you know, another thing that I want to bring up, it also overshadows what happened today. Also, kind of was unfair for the other fights that happened tonight because there were some great fights tonight. Agreed. Um, uh, the girls was a great fight. Uh, the heavyweight one was a great fight. Also, um, and the one um, Pettis versus Ferguson. Oh my God, that was a good fight too. I want to see a part two of that. Do you think it's worth a part two? Not a, not immediately. That he not doesn't immediately. want to see a, a part two. I I don't want one. I'll be honest. If it happens down the wow, road, if, if, it, if it happens down the road, I'll be okay with it, but not immediately. No, Tony Ferguson doesn't need to. Doesn't need to, He doesn't need to fight Anthony Pettis oh, okay. again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like Tony Ferguson well, should be fighting. Uh, Tony Ferguson should be fighting these names. These names only: Nate Diaz, Dustin Poirier <laughs> winner, Conor McGregor, or Khabib yeah. Nurmagomedov. Yeah. If it's not those names, Man, I do not want to see it for Tony Ferguson. Yeah. 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 You're right. You're right. Um. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. I just really enjoy that fight. It just was, it was sad. Yo, Pettis got fucked up, man. And I like Pettis. I really like him. I think he's cute. Anyways, um, what I was going to say. Did you watch any of the Boxing uh, Monster? Did you watch any of the DAZN card? I I didn't. I didn't. I was so focused on this McGregor thing. And also, um, I went to see Venom tonight. So I hear it's good. That happened. It was good. Yeah. Don't listen good. to the critics. Yep. Don't listen to the critics. They can be too harsh sometimes. It's kind of like, what the fuck do you want? Everyone, Go watch it. It's definitely fun. Everyone tells me it's a bad, fun movie. Like, it's not the greatest movie, but it's entertaining. So, <laughs> I'll go watch it. It's entertaining. Yeah, I agree to that. That I do agree. It's entertaining. I think it's worth watching. It's worth, it's worth going to the movies and just having a great time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the script was the only problem, but everything else is fine. Tom Hardy is just an excellent actor. You can't. You can't go wrong putting hard some hard in anything you do. And you can guy, actually you can understand him. him. <laughs> you can give him a fucking script from co- from a college student and that dude would do that script freaking amazing. Like just the the most basic amateur script he will be for the best. <laughs> Anyways, have a good night guys and don't let this ruin your night. It was a great fight, it was a great weekend. <laughs> It was a, a great night and a great weekend. And plus, we still have World Boxing Super Series card in the morning. God, that is... And that's still the best boxing card of the weekend. I know we had the Jack Car- Catterall O'Hara Davies fight, which I'm not going to talk about. I'm just... I'm not. I'm, that was so bad. Um, excuse me. Um, obviously, the DAZN card for Jesse Vargas, Thomas DeLorme. Fun fights. Uh, the Artibetabee fight. 
uh, versus Calum Johnson. That was a fun four round little war. Um, the Daniel Roman fight was was decent against Gavin McDonald. Uh, got him out of there. I think I, I forget what round was it like the tenth round. It was late. Yeah, tenth, eleventh. Uh, but good fights all, all round. Going to the eight four five area code eight four five. Who is this? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's uh, Patrick. I'm from New York. What's up, Patrick? How you doing? Good. How are you doing? Doing good, uh, man. I just had a question. Who do you think would win in a fight? Prime Anthony Pettis when he submitted Benson Henderson or current Habib? Current Habib. Current Habib. Like, for, for, uh, Pettis has always had issues with wrestlers. Let's not forget that that prime version against Benson Henderson also had a loss to Clay Guida, where Clay Guida just got takedowns, even though that loss, to be fair, you could, you could honestly give it to Anthony Pettis just because of the amount of submissions he threw up off his back. However, we saw guys right. like Clay Guida dominate him in the wrestling department. Uh, I think Khabib, even a prime version of Anthony Pettis, would have a lot of trouble with the aggressiveness of, of Khabib, the clinch work of Khabib, and also the the uh, against the cage work of Khabib. Khabib is really good about pressing up against the cage and grinding you out. Uh, for, uh, Pettis has always struggled with that. He always struggles with his back against the cage. He needs really that room to to work his game, have space uh, to work his counters. So I think even prime Pettis would have a lot of troubles with Khabib. That's fair. I guess I just got excited about that fighting in person tonight. <laughs> I'll put it this way: Prime right. Prime Thank Pettis. You, uh, Prime Pettis gives a lot of these guys a lot of work. He gave even, even this version of Pettis we saw tonight, which was not a prime version. Just look at his body; you can tell he's not prime anymore. He gave Ferguson that work. Yeah, Pettis is still an elite guy in the division. I know he's had some bad losses against like Dustin Poirier, for example, that he looked just really bad in, but he also looked really great against Michael Chiesa. So he's he may not be a top five lightweight anymore, obviously, but he's still that borderline top ten. He's going to give a lot of guys tough fights. Uh, I still think he can give most of these guys in this, in this division good fights. Like imagine Anthony Pettis versus Conor McGregor. Like tell me that's not a fight you would want to see. Well, I want to see it, <laughs> especially now. <laughs> I don't know what happens now, but uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you, Patrick. It. Have a great night. Uh, Santiago, unless we have any final thoughts, I think it's time to wrap it up, man. It's been a, it's been an interesting one, man. Uh, not only will this probably be one of our biggest shows to date. Shout out to everyone listening. Hit the like button, to the show, subscribe, all that stuff. Patreon.com forward slash Mixed Combat Radio. Uh, but it's also just an historic night on so many levels, man. Yeah, definitely. Um... My head's still spinning. Like I still like this entire show. By the way, has been very difficult for me, ladies and gentlemen. Like trying to get back on track just to analyze the fights it's hard after a moment like that it's my brain is really on one track mind right now and shout to mma twitter because they're they are going off right now man uh, yeah and you could only imagine Ooh. it throws through and you know you got a little respite too you had someone just bring something shout out to fernando man exactly so talking about mike garcia and pound for pound that was amazing. Shout out to Fernando, man. Drunk callers are the best callers. That's what I say. And we got two Fernandos. We got one from Chicago and one from LA. No, he's not Fernando. That's just Fern. Like, we we never call Fern Fernando. Have you ever called Fern Fernando? Once. I, maybe a half a time. Okay? <laughs> yes. And then like, also... I, I might have said, like, Fernando, and I was like, no, wait, just Fern. I, I might have done that. Like, no, like, it's just Fern. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, no, but it's, it's been a fun night. It's been a fun show thus far. You know, special shout out to everyone that called in today. Yes, Ron, appreciate JP, it. Fernando, Fern, Monster Peace. Patrick at the end right there. Yeah, you know, uh, giving their takes. And uh, we appreciate it, honestly. Uh, we love that you guys called in. And uh, I don't really have anything else to say regarding what we've seen. You know, we've said what we had to say at this point. Uh, what about you? Very quickly, Rubisk in the chat saying, Matt DeLorme got robbed. That was bullshit. I didn't score it, but DeLorme probably won that fight. Let's be completely honest. So, shout out to boxing uh, and just judging overall. Like, it's not just boxing. Like, judging in combat sports sucks. Um, but anyways, I'm Matt the Hipster Hunter. You can find me at Matt Hunter, MCR, all platforms. Uh, be back tomorrow. Patreon.com forward slash Mixed Combat Radio. Obviously, tomorrow, no, sorry, Monday, our full review show. So, the Thomas DeLorme fight, the entire DAZN card, World Boxing Super Series. Uh, the Jack Catterall versus uh, O'Hara Davies fight car with uh, Dino Dubois, 
Uh, Nicola Adams getting a WBO, a WBO interim belt. All the fights this weekend, plus obviously the full fight card of UFC 229, broken down, reviewed, analyzed, dissected. Uh, Monday, same place to find the show on YouTube. Same number, call in 323-870-4051. Save that number. Hit the like button, share the show, subscribe. If you listen on podcast later, drop that fucking review. Because uh, I, I love reading reviews. We had a one-star review earlier this weekend. It was pretty funny. Uh, Santiago, final thoughts, wrapping up anything? Uh, great event. Um, good good weekend uh, Good weekend of fights. And uh, we still got that morning card for the World Boxing Super Series to look forward to, minus the fact that it's at 4 in the morning here in uh the uh, yeah, the, so the west and uh, 7 a.m. for the east coasters. I still wish it was on at 7 a.m. here. Like 7 a.m. is like a time where you can wake up and it's still early, but not too early. Yeah, exactly. You know? But 4 a.m. Monster Beast has it lucky right there. 4 a.m. I'm not, I'm not staying up or waking up that early. I'm sorry. Anyway, I love you. Anyway, I, Kelly Raylick, dark horse of that tournament. Can't wait to see you. But I am gonna DVR that motherfucker. Uh, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night. Peace. Stay safe out there, especially if you're in Vegas. Shit's getting crazy. Peace. Later, everybody.